View High School. Describe or define what Title IX is and what effects it has had on females in America. Equal access to sports for girls. Okay, very good. This is not the, my computer crash, which it's a law that prohibits discrimination based on gender in any academic or athletic program that receives government funding, which is really interesting because everyone in this country focuses on this one right here, but actually sports is only one of nine, one of ten programs under Title IX. Because this is a sports crazy society, this is the one that we focus on, this is the one that gets the most press. Um, when did, yeah? You, you know when that was 1972. So it was kind of on the tail end of the civil rights movement and equality, not just based on race, but also on gender. And the um, sports programs look completely different before this was passed. Most of us don't really have a recollection of what it looked like on um, public education. It was completely different. Yeah. Right. Okay, so, Great. here's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Oops. Sorry. Here's what I'm going to talk to you about I'm going to talk to you about some of the benefits of Title IX, some of the consequences of Title IX, in particular ACL injuries, and why these injuries occur in females more, um, more often than they do in males, how they repair that injury, and um, the cost of the injury, and possible prevention. Benefits. Increased participation in sports since 1972 has gone up tenfold at both the high school and collegiate level. Consequently, there's an increased number of uh, women earning college degrees, moving on from there to hold more corporate positions because of their educational background. Additional benefits are exercise. Survey done, if kids, um, if, if kids aren't in an organized sport, they only spend about 30 minutes playing outside um, per week. Heavy kids mean heavy adults, and all the health problems associated with that. Consequences, females incur injuries at rates significantly higher than males in the same sport with the same rules. And they've also found this to be true with the Army's research. They did research on basic training with the recruits. Females suffer injuries more than males do. This particular talk is going to focus on the rupturing of the ACL, which is measured in the number of ruptures per 1,000 athletic exposures, which is a practice or a game. Greater participation, more, um, more exposures. So what is the ACL? It's a, ligament that um, stabilizes the knee joint, but when you hear about it rupturing, it can either be a partial rupture, a complete rupture, or an avulsion, which is a twisting motion, and then the ligament just tears away from the bone. But why the difference? Why do females suffer this injury at rates nine times that of males in sports with the same, um, with the same rules? Soccer, basketball, females suffer this injury at rates nine times that of males. And so that really fascinated me. One possible explanation is Q angle. Q angle is a measurement from the outside of the pelvic girdle down to the patella and straight up. And females have a Q angle that's larger than males. And what effect this has is females land differently when running and jumping um, when they're during athletic events. Another one is musculature. The main stabilizer of the knee joint is the hamstring. When females land from running or jumping, they're more likely to contract their quadriceps as opposed to their hamstrings, which leads to joint instability. Another one is hormones. Estrogen affects the strength of soft connective tissue ligaments, and there's an increase of ACL ruptures um, during ovulation, in which estrogen levels have just peaked. Femoral notch. This is the, um, the knee joint. This is the femur. This right here would be the femoral notch. In females, it's shallower than it is in males. This also leads to joint instability on top of it. Females have a smaller ACL, so it can't handle the same force that a larger ACL could. Anterior pelvic tilt. Um, the pelvis tilts forward to accommodate a developing fetus, and this tilt also places greater um, stress on the knee joint, causing females to land differently when running and jumping. How do they repair it? The most common one is a patellar tendon graft. 
I cut out a piece of the patella, part of the patellar tendon and the tibia. So you have bone, tendon, bone, bone, tendon, bone. And then what they do to prep the knee is they drill a tunnel up into the femur and then through the tibia. Then they fish that graft in there, hold it in place with a screw, the bone plug with the screw. Same thing here. And then over time, um, the, the bone from the graft and the host will grow together. What that looks like in an x-ray from the front view is you have bone plug screw, bone plug screw, patellar tendon graft, side view, patella, femur, tibia, screw and screw holding that in and that's what it completed ACL. <coughs> that graft is 36% stronger than the original ACL. Um, but sometimes people injure their knees so much they can't take any more patellar tendon out so they have to use a hamstring tendon. And if they continue to injure their knees, they have to use cadaver grafts. They can use Achilles tendons. They can use all kinds of stuff because they're dead. Um, physical costs, lower academic performance, constant knee pain, and the big one, osteoarthritis. Um, financial costs, these reconstructions cost $25,000 a piece. They spent $750 million on ACL reconstructions on females alone last year. 30,000 ACL um, repairs done in the United States. So possible prevention, leading the way are countries whose governments have to pay for this surgery. They're the ones that are leading it. That would be these ones here with all these girls that are really happy because their health care is being paid for. <laughs> In the United States, uh, the biggest study I've ever done is they took 6,000 high school age um, soccer players, um, girls on club teams, and what they did is they put them into two groups. The train group that did warm-ups that strengthened their, um, their hamstrings and how they landed when jumping, and the untrained group did their normal warm-up. And what they found was two girls in the trained group suffered ACL tears, 32 in the untrained group for a reduction of 88% overall in injuries. So then, um, to recap what I'm talking to you about, Title IX has made an impact. Uh, that impact increased participation Increased participation leads to more injuries. The injuries can be repaired. The amount of injuries can be prevented. And evolution is unimpressed with Title IX's goal of equal access. <laughs>